Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone to the June 4, 2021 uh, Muslim Space Khutba. Inna alhamdulillah, inna alhamdulillah na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyat a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla allah wa man yudlidhu falahadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah. وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises belong to Allah We praise him when we ask him for guidance and for forgiveness we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and from the evil of our own actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can lead him or her astray, and whoever he leads astray, no one can lead him or her back to the straight path. I bear witness that there is no other deity except Allah by himself, no associates with him, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and do not die except as a Muslim. O you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and always say a word directed towards the truth so that he can make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah on his messenger has attained the highest achievement. Brothers and sisters, I'm gonna start with a few lines from a children's book today called Chickens on the Go by Aunt Judy. Around the world from here to there, chickens live most everywhere. Some are black, and some are white. If we're different, that's all right. Some are brown and some are red, but we're the same inside our head. It doesn't matter where we're from, we're all chickens, let's have fun. Canadian hens live in the cold. That's what makes us brave and bold. We love ice and, we've, and we love snow. We love hockey, don't you know? We don't have a lot to say instead of clucking, we say A. It doesn't matter where we're from, we're all chickens, let's have fun." Unquote. The book goes on to highlight uh, the diversity of other ethnicities and cultures and the, with the overarching message that we are all one. Folks, I know it may seem that we speak on diversity and inclusivity a lot, but we live in a world where there exist numerous forces pushing back against it. And it doesn't take much insight to look around and discover we live in a world of exclusivity, a world of tribalism, and the superiority of one group over another. We humans love to create special groups as a show of superiority. The homes and the neighborhoods we live in, the clothes we wear, the titles we boast, the color of our skin, the color of our passports even, and so on. And we as humans are deciding all the time, minute by minute, year by year, group by group, who's better or more deserving than another. And even worse, who's more righteous than the other? And we all do it even on a daily level. Think about the simplest criticism. Simply criticizing someone is a form of exclusion or a way of demonstrating superiority. I know I do it. Perhaps that is the reason the Prophet وسلم, as far as I know, never criticized anyone directly and rather would criticize an action instead. Last week's khutbah by Osama Malik was all about just injustice, and a lot of it based, was based on the exclusion, superiority, and perceived righteousness. If you haven't watched or listened, then I urge you to go to the Muslim Space YouTube channel and take 30 minutes and watch or even just listen to it. But this thing that we're doing, we determined, we determined who does and doesn't deserve this and that isn't what we are told to do in the Quran, nor in other traditions for that matter. And we love exclusivity, don't we? You know, nothing's wrong with paying for more or special service, but when we take it as a mark of superiority, then that's a different story. For example, we can take pride in keeping our neighborhood neat and tidy, but when we start to categorize people who we don't want living near our homes, that's a slippery slope. Folks, our tradition and the traditions that precede Islam instruct us on the unity of God, that is Tawheed, and by extension, to be, to be inclusive. Inclusivity is Tawheed, 
exclusivity is anti-Tawheed. Here's a story from the past. So Zainab bint Muhammad was the Prophet's eldest daughter. She was married to a man named Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'ah. So around the time of Islam, Zainab embraced Islam. Her husband, Abu al-As, did not. So during the first major battle, there was the Battle of Badr. You all know about this. He was captured and he was held in Medina. So by this time, all the Muslims were in Medina and the Quraysh and the pagans were in Mecca. At the time, Zainab was his wife. He lived in and she lived in Mecca. So he's captured and he's in Medina and he's held prisoner. At the time, the tradition was you have a ransom. You come and you pay a bunch of money and you get your, you get your family member back. So she collected rose, raised ransom money. She sent it over to Medina, including her mother's jewelry, Khadija's mother, the Prophet's beloved first wife. The Prophet sees this jewelry, sees the ransom, and he reportedly turns pale and says, okay, we're going to release Abu al -Has, but in return, I want, and we're not going to collect the money, take it all back, but we want Zainab to come to Medina in exchange. And so they agree to this. So around this time, Revelation had become pretty clear that a Muslim woman could not remain married to a pagan man. And this is the situation Zainab, the prophet, the prophet's daughter is in. But they remain married. For the next three years, she's in Medina, he's in Mecca. And then three years later, he comes to Medina and visits her. Next morning, she comes out and announces to the community that Abu Has is under my protection. Zainab says he's under my protection. And even though he's pagan and she's Muslim, they remain married. Now, there are some reports around this time the Prophet said that their marriage was null and void, but they were allowed to remain together then and even possibly after that moment. Either way, a very short time later, Abu al As embraces Islam. The important element here in the story to note is that they were not forced to divorce. Zainab was not forced to migrate to Medina to be with her father. And most importantly, she wasn't mocked by the believers. Her declaration of protection was upheld by her father, the Prophet, والسلام, and the community. Imagine how something like that would go over today. Can you imagine? Well, I can. I personally remember uh, over two decades ago now, yeah, uh, a, a personal friend of mine, a Muslim student, female, she married a Christian student, her classmate. Her, this is a friend of mine, her parents literally stopped all communication with her, tossed all of her things out of the house, literally, and completely disconnected from her. So you may have your thoughts on how you'd handle the situation, but there's no denying what happened was on the harsh side. She was an unemployed student, and basically what my friend, what she experienced was the ultimate exclusion, the severing of ties to kith and kin. This is against the spirit of Islam, a spirit of kindness and forgiveness. Doesn't the Quran say in Surah Al-Baqarah, in verse 256, let there be no compulsion in religion? We can disagree on the personal choices of others. You can disagree on what she did. But we must grant them the independence and the autonomy to journey down their own path and to allow Allah to be Al-Alim, the All-Knowing, to be Al-Hakam, the Judge, not us. Folks, there are other multiple signs in the Quran pointing towards inclusivity and away from exclusivity. There is inclusion or unity of revelation. There's unity of people and repeated reminders in the scripture of not to use our appearances or measurable gifts as something innate to be used to oppress one another. Oppression is after all a form of exclusion. We read in the Quran in chapter 49 verse 13, People, we created you all from a single man and a single woman and made you into races and tribes that you may recognize one another. In God's eyes, the most honored of you are the ones most mindful of him. God is all-knowing, all-aware. We know this verse very well, or you've seen it, or you've heard it. Here one can see pretty, clear, pretty clearly that through our diversity, gender, color, language, and even religions and traditions, we are meant to come together and learn from one another. 
These outward markers are meant to invite us to look deeper into each other and to get to know the other and through that know God. Look around at all that we can create as human beings, spaceships, starships, vaccines, levitating trains, music, art. All of these are signs of God's majesty. These outward markers are not marks of value or what, of, of what we're worth. Rather, rather, the true mark of our value is taqwa or God consciousness. It is internal. It is hidden from each other and is only truly seen by Allah. But we tend to use these outward appearances and gifts as a way to exclude or dominate. Let's look at inclusivity of religions or traditions. Again, we read in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 136, قُلُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبُ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ وَمَا أُوْتِيَ مُوسَىٰ وَعِيْسَىٰ وَمَا أُوْتِيَ النَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Say you believe, so you believe, so say we believe in God and what was sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes and what was given to Moses, Jesus, and the prophets by their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we devote ourselves to Him. Again, in Surah Al Baqarah, we read the believers, the Jews, the Christians, and the Sabians, all those who believe in God and the last day and do good will have the rewards with their Lord. No fear, no fear for them, nor will they grieve. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, was reported to have said in Surah Al-Bukhari, the prophets are half brothers, their mothers differ, and their religion is one. So what we read in the Quran is the unity of the message of all the prophets, belief in the unity of God. The languages are different, the contexts are different, the laws are different but the message is the same one message. It isn't correct for a Muslim to state that he or she is superior to a pious Franciscan friar who's devoted to the unity of God simply because he or she or he is Muslim. That is for God to decide all that. Another thing to look at in terms of inclusivity or exclusivity is looking at other groups of people, travelers, the indigent, women, all marginalized groups. In the, again, in the Quran, we read, "Fati al Qurba haqahu wal miskina wal nasabina, dalik khairun lil ladina yuriduna wajha Allah, wa ula ekahum al muflihun." So give your close relatives their due, as well as the poor, the needy traveler. That is best for those who seek the pleasure of Allah, and is they who will be successful. When we see someone who outwardly has less, no home, or no job, or no whatever. It is tempting to feel pity, but pity is, it implies a, a superior inferior relationship. I feel pity for you. I, I, I feel sorry for you, you lower person, or you have less clothes than me. Perhaps empathy is a better, is a better term or better way to feel or better state of mind, where one strives to place themselves on the same level as the other. Maybe that's a better place to be. Again, in the Quran, we read, Worship God. Join nothing with Him. Be good to your parents, relatives, orphans, the needy, the neighbors near and far, travelers in need, and to your servants. God does not like the arrogant, the boastful people. To, be, to not be good is to be arrogant. It's being superior because that's what arrogance is, and by extension, that is excluding Exclusivity is harmful and wrong because it is denying the divine gift of dignity, equality, and diversity that God has bestowed on all creation. Folks, there is a purpose to diversity, and inclusivity itself is uncomfortable, and it isn't easy. In order to be inclusive, we inevitably find ourselves confronting our own beliefs and, and critiquing them. Being inclusive is a critique of our internal belief system. If one finds him or herself uncomfortable, including the other, then one needs to question him or herself why they feel that way. But let's be frank. What really is the difference between what is the in and what is the out? What is the in group and what is the out group? 
In reality, it is belief and unbelief. That really is the dividing line. It's pure and simple. That's what it is. It's not black skin or white skin or yellow skin or red skin. It's not Muslim or Christian and Christian and Hindu and man and woman. In the end, that's what it is. In the end, inclusivity is tawheed or unity. We all came from Allah. We all came from God, all of us. And right now, we are all right now, as we are aging, as time passes, we're turning to him. Remember that when you meet your fellow traveler on this planet, on this life, whether it's that retail store employee at Target helping you to return something, the person behind the register at the gas station, the doctor you go visit when you're sick, the relative who gets under your skin, the LGBTQ colleague or classmate of yours, we are all one. Remember that. I say the saying of mine and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and for the rest of Muslims so ask him for forgiveness. He's the, he's the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, all exaltations belong to Allah. Peace and blessings on the Messenger sallallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Folks, you know, we, can, we read in the Quran that we all could have been one. We call it could have been the same. But it is divine will that we perceive these differences. In chapter 5, verse 48, Allah says, For each among you we have appointed a law and a way. And had God willed, he would have made you one community, but he willed otherwise, so that he can try you in that which he has given you. So vie with one another in good deeds, unto God should be your return altogether. And he will inform you of that in which you differ. Once again, we're all going to return to our maker, and then we will know what all these differences are about. Commentators interpret this verse to mean that the simultaneous existence of different religious traditions is part of the divine wisdom. Of course, there are other commentators who have more exclusivist, ex exclusivist interpretations. I personally prefer the former. But I want to highlight something in that last part of this verse. Vi in good deeds. That's the purpose of why we are here and why we're different. The differences create the ability to compete. A little silly example, you know, if we're all LeBron James or Serena Williams, then every basketball game would end in a tie. Every U.S. Open would never end. We can see each other and we can recognize our differences, but we should use those to compete and to outdo each other in goodness and righteousness. In a way, inclusivity or inclusiveness is righteousness. They are linked hand in hand. Being inclusive is being good. So this, what is the purpose of these good deeds? In the last ayah in Surah Al-Kahf, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعْبَادِهِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Say, O Prophet, I am only a man like you, but it has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. So whoever hopes for the meeting with their Lord let them do good deeds and associate none in the worship of their Lord. So the purpose, once again, is to return to God and with a scale full of good actions. And the reward for that, once again, we find the answer in Scripture. In Surah 101, Surah Qari'ah, And the one whose good deeds are heavy on the scales will have a pleasant life. So in conclusion, bringing it all together, we are all different in appearances, in gender, in languages, in culture. Yet we are all from the same source, from one male and one female, from unity. These differences are there to be used to try to outdo one another in performing good actions and being righteous. And to what end? To have a pleasant and to meet and return to Allah in a good state. Being inclusive is being righteous and is the essence of tawhid or unity. They go hand in hand. To be the opposite or to be exclusive is against the tawhidic principle. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wa ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba 
وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوا واتقوه يجعل لكم من امركم مخرجا O servants of Allah, Allah commands the and commands justice, the doing of good, and the liberality, the kith and kin. And he forgives all his shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you can remember. Remember Allah is the supreme in glory and he'll remember you and be thankful to him. And he'll increase you in your bounty and seek his forgiveness and he'll forgive you. And have taqwa, be mindful, be God conscious. And he'll make a way out for you, for your issues. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Thank you all for being here. Uh, announcements for this week. Uh, don't forget, there's always uh, chaplain office hours. Every it's online, um, and this is uh, so. Go to the chaplain page on the Muslim Space website to find out the times and to schedule a time for you. Uh, monthly Quran Halakha. Uh, it is this Sunday, June sixth at eleven a.m. It's going to be Surah Al Quraysh. There's a dedicated program page. There's a, a reading list and a uh, uh, an audio. Um, so go to the website to get more information on that. It'll be on Zoom on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, there'll be a new program, The Prophet and I, uh, starting Friday, June 11th at 6 p.m. Central Time with Chaplain Usama Malik. It is uh, basically keeping the Sira relevant. It's going to be a summer program. We're going to dive into the rich life and times of the Blessed Prophet وسلم, through an interactive weekly series. It's led by Usama. Each week, we're going to go through different parts of the prophetic biography, lifting up the historical and religious significance of each, but also the contextual relevance to the world in which we live today, as well as some of the most pressing issues facing our time, such as social justice and faith, economics and inequality, and practicing our faith in a hostile environment and much more. It's a 90-minute program uh, starting this Friday, June 11th. The last program will be August 13th. Please sign up. The sessions will be a, consist of a lecture and then a time for some Q&A Q &A interactive discussion and a reflection portion. It'll be online as well. Please sign up. Uh, last, make sure you sign up for the WhatsApp group. You'll get one announcement so you know what's going on. Uh, and um, that's pretty much it, folks. Hope you all are having a good week. And um, that's pretty much it. How you all doing? <laughs>